So good afternoon. Um, this slide session is about uh, what people are struggling with when writing with Cypher. Um, so I will present some things not to do and how to make it better to improve performance of Cypher writing. So the first thing to use is an up-to-date driver because you can find a lot of different drivers, especially for PHP and JavaScript, for example. So it is best to use an official driver, like there are four official Neo4j drivers for Python, JavaScript, uh, Java, and .NET. And we maintain the PHP driver, which is compliant with the Neo4j technology compliance kit. Um, the second thing to do is to forget completely object mappers. So you can find Java, Neo4j, OGM, Python, OGM, etc. But when you want to write fast, you need to write personalized queries for your rights, for your domain, etc. So forget everything that takes an abstraction on the domain. It has overheads at the application level with garbage collection, etc. So forget it. So and object mappers are not made for batch imports. So if you want to write 100 dozen nodes as fast as possible, it doesn't make sense to use object mappers. The first tip is use query parameters. Why? If you take this query, it will create three person. But Cypher can uh, cache the query plans. So if you use parameters, it will cache the query plan and reuse it the next time. So it will make things really uh, faster. So you change it like this. And you pass the parameters with the driver. I will make a, oh, I will pass to the other one. And we use identifiers. So I see a lot of people, when generating queries at the application level, doing this. So P1, P2, P3. This is really bad, because it prevents completely the uh, query plan to be cached. So Cypher will think every time it is a new query, so he has to make statistics, caching, etc. So it is really to avoid. Again. Reuse the identifiers and pass parameters. I will show you the difference here. Uh, oh. This four. This two. This two. Okay. So this write will do what is not good. So it will not reuse identifiers, so it will create a new identifier, and it will not use parameter. So we'll run this one. Right. So you see the query times, the time it takes to write. Only one node is 20, around 30 milliseconds per query. Now we're going to change it. Oh, sorry, that was a node. Uh, we're going to change it, and we will reuse parameter, and uh, reuse identifier, sorry, and reuse parameters. So you can see that we dropped already to 10 milliseconds, which is not uh, fast enough. So we will continue with the tips. We come later. One other tip is to split your queries. So avoid to have queries of 30, 40, 000, uh, 40 lines. So it's better to split. This is a query running in production. So as you see, I did really small queries. So creating a user, creating a user, finding another node, creating a relationship. 
matching a, a new node for request, a repository creating a relationship. So you can run all these queries in one transaction, but it is really optimized, small optimized queries. So you can run them in the same transaction, so you don't have to be afraid of transactionality and ACID compliance. It is easier to maintain. So a query of two lines is really easy to maintain compared to a query of 30 lines. It is also easier to profile. So uh, you can really use profile and you have a small query plan and you can really identify where the bottlenecks are in your queries. And also 10 small optimized queries run always faster than one long unoptimized query, always. So it adds a bit overhead in the code but at the end, you will really benefit from this overhead. The last thing, the last thing, another thing is to check your schema indexes. So this query is, we are creating a range from zero to 10,000, and we will merge a new person node with an ID being the increment in the range. So you can see in the query plan that it is doing a node by label scan. So if I will have 1,000 persons, it will try to find 1,000 persons checking if the value for the merge is the same or not, he will create a new node. But 1,000, 1 million, 10 millions. So every time your query will grow up um, in DB heads. So very not fast. However, you just create a constraint. So a constraint will automatically create a schema index in the database. So it will be a O1 operation. So you, if you have a constraint on the person ID, then the next time you will do the merge, for the, because merge is match or create, the match will be O1 operation. So it will run very fast. And if you look, the new query plan is node unique indexing, which is really an O1 operation. But she arrives. So here we were creating every time a new query for creating one node. So you can defer the rights, for example, at the application level, keep uh, an array, for example, of dozens of operations, and then unwind them. So unwind is very, very, very powerful in Nofoj. This is one of the my best uh, clothes. So here, for example. I'm creating an array at the application level, and I pass it as a first um, parameter. So it will iterate this array, and then do an operation. So it will create a person, setting the properties. Then in this array, I have also the person who has to be uh, connected. So I will create person nodes and relationships to other person. So it will try to match the connection and create this connection, right? So again, I will do it here. Uh, test four. So I will demonstrate the performance with and without schema indexes first. So without, so you can see that Without schema index, how more nodes you have, how more time it will take for the first match or the merge. So, because it is an ON operation. So if we change this, and we create a schema index, a unique constraint, the next time we will run this query, it is linear in time, and you can see the performance is really, really, really faster, right? Okay. So the last demonstration is a small script, so it is creating uh, 5,000 nodes, and every node will have um, 
six relationship and three properties on a node and three properties on every relationship, right? So if I run it, oh, second. So the first one in the beginning went a bit slower because it is not cached yet. But as you can see, it is creating 5,000 nodes, 20,000 relationship with three properties each. So, oh. okay. so you can see that approximately per second, we can create 25,000 objects in the database with properties because it is a benchmark when you don't have properties, it can be faster, but generally not have properties. So I prefer to benchmark with quite a common properties. Right? But there is sometimes problems that newcomers are not used to, but this is a uh, problems you can encounter in production. For example, it is query replanning. So what is happening is that when you are creating very fast, a lot of nodes, a lot of relationships, Cypher will replan the, will detect a plan as tail. For example, and we try to replan to replan the cache based on statistics. But as you are always creating new nodes, new relationships, the statistics are always evolving. So during batch imports, for example, you can uh, disable that. A use case we had in production recently is for holiday houses recommendations for a client. And we were, so every house node has 800 relationship to other house with similarity computations based on click sessions, based on uh, search feature, based on uh, content based uh, recommendation. The problem is that we were recomputing in the background always uh, the similarity. So we were deleting every relationship, recreating new ones to the new top K 800 uh, similar relationship. But if you will look in the logs of the OFOJ, you will see it will be always a query detected as tail replanning, the query is detected as tail replanning. So there is um, some configuration in the OFOJ that you can use for disabling the replanning in the first time. So also it will introduce garbage collection. So your database will be unavailable, not available, but will take like 500 milliseconds more, for example. So those parameters are those one. So replan interval, it is uh, the standard cipher interval who will, who, when he will say, okay, I want to replan anyway, but also the divergence threshold. So it is like, what is the, number of statistics that needs to be changed to, uh, for the query plan to be marked as still. So there is, this is a, a factor. So a factor of one will never replan the database. Um, I discussed with the Cypher uh, author yesterday, and we are, they are maybe thinking of being able to have this factor on the query level. So because it is impacting also all your other queries, for example. So. This is something you can use for making your writes uh, also faster in the first batch import. It's better than to restart Neo4j with a good factor because all your match queries, your user-facing queries will be impacted uh, by this. Thank you. Questions? Yes? doesn't perform as well as if you do all the nodes and then all the relationships. Is that true or um, in general? Or? In, in a use case, so the question is if it's better to create uh, 
no cell relationship in the same query. So it depends. So it depends also of your data import strategy. But for example, sometimes it is better to uh, create all the nodes without schema index because every time uh, you will create a node, uh, if you know that you will not have duplicates, then disable, create the schema index after creating the nodes. And then before running the relationships creation, create the schema index so when the match will perform, it will be all one operations every time. So it depends how you import data. But in my general use case, we are really taking data from uh, MySQL or something. So we, we don't have like a CSV of imports, for example. So it is real time data who is coming up. So, but yes, in that use case, it is sometimes better to create a node without schema. So the Lucene operations are not performed during the write. And then create the schema index, wait it is online, and create your relationships. Yeah. So. Other questions? No? Thank you very much.